What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Cruising with Kevin, presented by Prep Protect and powered by Genesis. I'm your host, Kevin Cuenca, and today's guest is Compton AV. He's done songs with everybody from The Game to Snoop, had a relationship with Nipsey, and he's also a friend, just a really good, humble dude. And we get to ride around today, listen to his new album, All In, and get a sense for his journey and what's got him to this point. You guys get to come along for the ride. Let's get it! One life to live, one life to shine. I pray to God that I live my life right. So in the meantime, in between time, get you some money, baby, and I'm going to try my best to do likewise. And I know that money Try and get it right. Yeah. What's up with you, bro? Big Kev, what's up, man? How are you? I'm good, real good, real good. You good? Good to see you, man. Good to see you too, bro. So, AV, welcome to Cruise with Kevin, presented by my good friends over at Crep Protect. I will be sending you a care package for you, Mom Dukes, your daughter. Moms. Just tell them, like, this is beautiful, man. You got the mountains. This is a nice neighborhood. Like, how long you been uh, terrorizing this neighborhood, and uh, how how many times have they tried to kick you out of here? Uh, they ain't got me yet, but uh, you know, <laughs> it feels safe because I'm the most dangerous guy on the block. You know, stay dangerous. I come from Compton, California, so you know, to move to a spot like this, you know, shows some sign of success, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm working, man. I love it. Um, you know, we on the phone. You had mentioned just your, I'll, I'll say, real estate acumen. Yeah. Um, and I'm currently looking as well, like, for you, when did that click? Like, okay, money's coming in from music, I can't just do cars and jewelry, like I have mm -hmm. to start creating some, some assets that I can hold on to down the road and that will actually benefit me further. Um, as soon as I got the check, you know what I mean? Uh, we come from the streets, um, we all want nice things, but that has to resonate into thinking of having nice things and owning nice things and, and being able to put this out to where you can get paid for your nice things. You know what I mean? So that was just no brainer to me, especially a guy coming from Compton, California that lived in a two bedroom and six of us on the floor and two of us in the bedrooms, you know, stuff like that. So like that was automatic, like get houses, buy houses. You know, my mom got a crib, I got cribs, you know what I'm saying? My brother's got cribs. So that was just automatic. That was automatic thought for us for sure. You know, you mentioned the humble beginnings. Mm -hmm. uh, Compton Avenue, 124th Street, if I'm correct. Yep. Can you take us back to just what life was like? Like, we just drove by a little pe playground. Like, yeah, what was it like for you as a kid coming up in that uh, area and era and um, just kind of your experiences? at that age? Oh, you considered the norm. You know what I mean? I wasn't used to nothing else but that. But when I got out, I started seeing how, like, we come from a hectic place. You know what I'm saying? We come from a place where you can lose your friends, man. And I lost so many of my mm -hmm. friends, you know what I mean? Some of my friends couldn't be with me right now to chase this dream that I'm chasing. And, you know, as I look back at it like that, I'm like, damn, you came a long ways. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But for all the kids and all the people that's locked in any type of poverty or any type of bad neighborhood, there's much more out there, man. Get out there and chase your dreams and get out there and, and try to live. You know what I'm saying? People people clown, uh, what was it? Cube said, he said, uh, Dre and them, he said, uh, yelling out Compton, but you move to Riverside. You better move to Riverside because you don't want to lose your life. You know what I mean? I was still living in Compton when Remy My Money was on the radio. So I was big, but my, my pockets didn't match my perception. And, um, you know, Snoop gave me a little game too. He like, look, man, don't let nobody uh keep you down don't let nobody stop you like you you do what you need to do for safety first of all mm -hmm. and I mean my daughter is 12 years old so so getting out of that place showed me that there's much more to the world and that's why I kept Compton on my name though you know my name is Compton AV I take Compton everywhere I go mm -hmm. so I was able to look at it from that type of standpoint that type of sense you mentioned Snoop we just turned on Chino Ave big Snoop got a house down the hills right next to Chino hey so that was that literally one of those things where it's like hey man move to where you want to move and don't feel like you need to stay in an area was that something that he was like specifically saying to you or was it just kind of a like a feeling that you got from him um actions you know with Interrupt. corrupt with gotcha. corrupt with snoop actions meaning they can't get to you because they don't stay in long beach or they don't stay in la or they don't stay in compton you got to literally wait for them to drive that hour or two hours to come meet up with you somewhere so it just clicked like oh i think every 
you know, people stay in Calabasas. The rich people stay in Calabasas. I think that's where I'm going next. But yeah, like, I don't think it's safe for any type of successful person to be in a neighborhood that they grew up in. That would just be stupid. But we're fighting an everyday battle where people say we sell out or you, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's, that's, that's BS, man, because when we die, then what? Then what? You know what I'm saying? And um, it's just sad to say, like, even mentioning Nip, you know, we shared the experience with Nip. He died at a store, something that he built for the community. And they hate on you that bad. They hate on you that much. And it's usually somebody close to you. So you got to move away sometimes. Take the, take your loved ones, take the ones, that, and you go. And tell everybody else, I see you when I see you. You mentioned the shared experience. So for the people that don't know, which would be basically everybody, yeah. um, Let Them Hate was a video shoot that you were doing with OT Genesis. Mm -hmm. And... We had just moved from a scene in a, in a warehouse mm -hmm. and we were doing like a, a fake news part and then we we're going to a diamond store. And as I got to my car, a friend had called and it, I had missed the call. It was like I had a couple missed calls from her and it was, uh, I had a voicemail that said, hey, like, or a text, hey, have you, have you heard what happened to Nip? And I was like, no, what the hell are you talking about? Like we were just shooting this video. And then we got the news. I know I got the news in that moment as we were going to the second location. And at that point, he had just been shot, but we didn't know how bad it was or what his condition was. And then upon arrival at the diamond store, um, we were out front for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes or so. And then, and then the news came through that he had passed and it was over. And I remember thinking like, do I want to be here right now? Right. Do I want to finish right. this video? Yeah. But I also know, having shot like behind the scenes in music videos and just being around them and stuff, how much planning, effort, time, yeah. money goes into them. And I was like, the last thing I'm going to do is is leave you yeah. like, bro, come on, man, we got to finish this. Yeah. Even though I knew it was really heavy on your heart as well. And I feel like we had that moment of in the store where we could just forget about what was going on and just live in that moment and almost in our own ways, try to honor him in, in a way that he would want us to. Um, what was your takeaway from that day and kind of what do you think as you look back on that on that day? And, and I'm happy you said that because it was like um, it was a moment where we all wanted to give up on that day. And um, I think I found out before you, Kev, and I'm going to tell you how I found out before you. I was actually doing a scene in the warehouse in Genesis leaned in my ear and told me. Mm. But at this point, you just pray to God that it's not true. Yeah. So, you know, even Genesis stuck around and Genesis is like, look, I heard the news. You know, Genesis was close with a couple people over there. He leaned over and said, hey, bro, Nip just got hit. And I'm like, heart drop right in the middle. Y'all don't even know this. Me and I don't know if you've seen Genesis, but he kind of walked off to the side and kind of put his head towards the wall, you know, wishing that it wasn't true. And um, I was still shooting the scene and I was just like, nah, Nip too strong. And Nip too strong. Nip, that, Nip not going to let that happen. So it um before it even hit me, it was just like man never not not like that you know and it's just a humbling situation it's that thing that we talk about leaving home you know what i mean sad to say man most of our generals get hit from where they supposedly supposed to be loved you know what i mean and uh that's just the way life goes man i was able to touch that man before and and, and um i'm gonna tell you a special situation where um i went to a store today opened up the marathon store where he reopened it yeah. again he had it he was doing it big he had everybody in the front and when he seen me he was like avi come on who you with and he pulled us in and when i walked in he gave me a hug and you know it's kind of like weird sometimes you know what i mean so i don't want to be funny but rest in peace yeah. the homie for real but he kind of like grabbed me and he held on and he said if you here i know i got compton and I know there's other rappers from Compton too, but it was just special that AV was there for him. And I just took that note and I said, that's somebody big, that's somebody motivational, that's somebody inspirational. And he still understands how, how big it is for um, local rappers, home rappers, uh, city rappers to be at his, and this is when he was becoming global. And uh, that just taught me something like, man, Nip is just way on a whole nother level than us. He don't live, this is another wavelength. That is a, that's a walking angel, if you ask me, bro, because rappers from our place, we hate on each other. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to, I don't add myself to that, but I say we, because we all have to take the blame for the situation and uh, actually overcome the situation. And uh, Nip was a part of overcoming. Nip, YG with the whole blood and crypt thing, man, that was big. And uh, we, a lot of us need to get on that. And, uh, and yeah, just, just build from this, man. You know what I'm saying? We shouldn't have lost a legend like that. And uh, I don't feel like we lost him, he's still here. 
Shit, I see more pictures of him and I see more than I did when he was walking earth. So yeah, man, rest in peace and condolences to his family, condolences to his wife. And that was just a crazy situation, man. That was just a crazy situation. Like I said, you shared that with me and I appreciate you for sticking around, man, because everybody was down after that, man. That, that really, it rained in LA for sure. Yeah, it definitely did that day, man. The, the moment that you're talking about at his store, was that the ribbon coveting ceremony yeah. when Big Boy was there? Mm -hmm. Okay, I was actually there as well mm -hmm. and had my video camera and I was getting like just different shots and scenes. I interviewed his dad that day. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't meet Sam, I met Sam uh, at a different time. Sam was in there. But I remember um, I actually got to physically meet him, shake his hand, have say thanks for like the little shit I was doing which blew me away um, when they did the planes collaboration mm -hmm. that was a week before your music video shoot and you know I think we have these moments that we'll cherish forever for sure I know I will there was actually a moment in a song it was a game song or nah that you were featured on yeah. where you shouted nip out yeah how did you like come to know of his, his music or did you have other chances where you'd actually met him in person before that Oh, you talking about game or uh, Nip? No, Nip. Oh, yeah. Because uh, you shouted him out in the song. I imagine you guys had some kind of interaction before that. About 10 years earlier than that. My little brother, I have a little brother that's a couple years younger than me. Was it like this? Nobody played Nipsey before him. This is Nipsey with the long shirt, Nip. <laughs> you know, the two braids, game banger, banged yeah. out Nip. And my little brother, oh my God, he played Nip to where the house is like, man, who is this dude you playing all the time? Like, and, um, you know what I'm saying? We from Compton, he, his dad grew up in LA towards the 60s. So he used to be over there, he like, it's Nipsey Hustle. He blowing up, watch, he gonna blow up. Yeah. So like, you know, I had heard him all in my household 10 years before the success like really popped off like crazy. And um, yeah, I was just uh, linked up with Game. Game had me doing um, four songs, five songs for Year of the Wolf. That's a crazy story too, because Game, I went to the studio at seven, Game had to be at the club at 12, and I met Game at the club after I did four songs. And he was kind of like, I think he was upset with me. I think he kind of like, how are you at the club? And I told you to do some songs. He thought you know? didn't do them. He thought didn't I didn't put do them. all into them or your I went, I went in on them. Yeah. And, and Orna is one of the verses that came from that night. You know, like, I told him like, bro, I don't write. I don't, you know, I don't write. Kev, I ain't wrote a record in 13, what, 12 years? I don't write at all, bro. Really? Yeah, I'm right off the top. Put me in the studio 15 minutes, you'll get a verse. Another 10 minutes, you'll get another one. So I'm warmed up. Boop, boop, boop. Where'd that come from? I think. Watch old Jay Z documentaries or something? Nah. <laughs> um, I think with I think with anything that you dedicate yourself, you just get you just get that good to it. You know, yeah. I mean, this is one of these things I actually dedicated to myself, and and I don't say it to be like I'm just the dopest no. in the world. Like, I still got some work to do, but yeah, you know, you. It's it, your process. It's it's my process. Yeah. I get in the studio, and I can rap for to 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 eight bars powerful without messing up. And then I'm able to use the same tone and go back over it and fix it. Like, kind of punch in. Yeah, kind of punch in fast, yeah. But when you first started with music, rap, etc., you were writing and yeah. writing for others, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, was that high school years? Yeah, yeah. Okay, how does, like, my, my question would be, to most high schoolers, they want the shine to be in the spotlight, etc. What was it about you that when you first started dabbling in music, it was more of a writing lane? Um, basketball is my first love, I will say that. Um, I always had this voice, this exact voice when I was 15, I had this voice, 16 when I had this voice. Um, and that was a time when rap was losing its, you can say like masculinity, everybody should start going for the more squeaky kind of tone in their raps. Okay. Well, I overthought it and I was like, my voice ain't cool for rap but I knew how to do it. I knew how to write it. And um, some of my boys would write it. And um, I mean, with a uh, rap, and I used to just give them my lyrics. And I used to sit back and let the crowd go crazy to them rapping my lyrics, it was crazy. Like, I seen one of my boys win a rap battle spitting what I just wrote for him two days ago. Like, so that turned into writing for, for girls, for females, R&B. And like, I'm like, weird, Kev. I don't mean to say it like that, but like, I like everything. Like, I get on some rock. I get on some some country. I like everything, bro. I, I'm a I'm like one of those like when Nelly came out with over and over again. That was like my banger. Tim McGraw. Like, yeah, like that was like my banger. And, and and you know we come from the trenches, so everybody looking at me like, 
fuck, what you fuck banging that shit for? Like, but like I said, you know, further up and, and closer to date right now, those are the reasons I know melodies. You know, my, my favorite rapper changed over 10 times. It went from Ja Rule, it had been Luda, it had went from Nelly, it had been Benny Siegel, it had been Chris and Neef, it had been, it's crazy how many times I've had a favorite rapper. I had original Ross, not Ross now, original Ross was my favorite rapper. Like, I just like rawness in people. I like originality in people. And um, I'm able to pick from it and my tone of voice and the new age of me even being in tune with the youngsters, I was able to create my own and create my own lane. And I see people that sound like me, it's crazy, man. I go to the clubs and hear, these niggas sound just like me. I'd be like, <laughs> damn. Uh, so at some point, you transition into getting the mic in your hands. Yeah. You start doing battle rapping, guys with like daylight, disaster, yeah. started. Um, they set me up, man. Exploring that. What do you mean by that? It's my boy, his name is Chris Phillips. I hope he's looking at this too, because I ain't seen Chris Phillips since my success. I'm looking for you, bro. Just know you're one of my guys. Um, he took me to a rap battle. It was so many like girls there, some bitches there. I'm thinking, this a party. And before you knew it, it was like AV to the stage. Huh? Uh huh? Like, in that moment, he like, hey, don't be scared. You've been writing all this shit and spitting all your little lyrics on the phone to me it's time to go big no way like, i remember cursing him out like going on stage like bro why the fuck you do this and um crazy thing is i ran through five dudes that night pause you know I, yeah. I, I really fucked over five guys that night like crazy like i barred them and um they invited me back the next week which i took an l i didn't really took a like take an l but i think that was like initiation they was making everybody lose so I guess it can put fire. To, I don't know. I don't know what they was doing, but I never lost a battle in my life to me. So from there, I mean, there's a big difference between getting put on the spot, surprised, and not really knowing what you're walking into, to then finding the passion in it and being like, I really like this shit. I want to keep yeah. doing it. Um, how long did it take for you to kind of catch that bug and then really get into the battle rap side of things? I think everybody like winning at something. That was my first win in music. Meaning, um, my first stage, I was able to feel the stage, I was able to feel people reacting. And um, I'd always wanted people to listen to my song, and this was the avenue for me to get people to listen to my song. So I used it, and um, I became real popular. I started throwing parties. Um, I would save the stage. I think I did literally 10, maybe 10 parties before I even performed one time. But it was a way for me to um, build my stage, build my platform. So battle rapping took me there for sure, for sure. You mentioned throwing parties. Those were the LMKR yeah. days, right? Yeah. So how did this come about? And can you talk about how crazy it got just in terms of the support that you received and, and kind of the, the platform that you guys were building at that time? Mm -hmm. Movement is everything. What I will say is we shook the city. Um, some young cats, I was always a fan of groups. Rather, it was uh, the Rockefeller camp, um, the state prop camp, the, the, the diplomats, the, the St. Lunatics. I was always a fan of team. And um, what happened was I met a couple cats from around the way that did the same thing I did. And um, we linked. We all had our strong suits. We all had our attributes. Uh, producers, writers, acting, dancers, rappers, everything. And um, I just let everybody feel free to chase their dream, man. Who was I to stop you from doing what you do? And um, especially when you represented as well. And everything was LMKR. You know, that was uh, Label Me Crack Rated. I was talking to a girl named Shay back then. I, man, you, you get some good info. But I was talking to a girl <laughs> named Shay back then. And um, moms had just kicked me out the house. We out there selling drugs. And Shay was a good, she can sell the weed good. You know what I mean? And um, she would let me like hang out at her house when she her was dad was gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, slash girlfriend. For K, right? Too. Gotcha. And uh, one day we was chilling. One of my boys was from um, X Rated, and I was always from Crack City, Crack Star. And um, we had said something like Crack Rated one day, and she was like, "No, you better not leave us out. Don't leave the girls out. We we bomb. We label me bomb." And she was like, "It's label me Crack Rated," and that's how the name came. Gotcha. And then when we kind of grew and changed it to Loyalty Music, Knowledge, Respect, which is the um four elements I feel like you need to be successful, um, strong-minded, and, um, you know, just for people to realize that we wasn't a joke, you know, like, we're not no joke, this is about, we're real loyal to each other, we're doing music, we, we through the years, we gain knowledge, and, and the city respect us, 
So um, I put that together and uh, yeah, LMKR, man, one of the biggest ENTs beside like, like, you know, and I got a shout outs to Pushes. Um, you remember Pushes when YG had Pushes? I don't uh, remember that, no. Joe Moses had AO, AOB. Yeah, I um, that, so. It was A2I, which was the Addicted to Ink Crew, um, the Fanatics, uh, which is where, uh, don't drop that dun dun, -dun yeah. easy killing them. Yeah, like, so everybody had a little powerful movement in the city. And um, what you do is you gather your members and uh, you become a family. And you push your music and it was, um, and we all start supporting each other. And that was the dope thing about it. And that was our first step to unity before the fame came. When the fame came, everybody went solo, left their groups, you know how it go. I stayed down though. It's a fact, all my members probably looking at me. I stayed down though, LMKR to the death. I still got LMKR on my name. And that that moment of, hey, guys are gonna split off, do their own thing. You had been used to the team atmosphere, whether mm -hmm. it was from sports or, or linking exactly. up like that. Um, but at some point you realize, all right, yeah, I've got people that are gonna be in my corner and, and help me out, but I've gotta make some of these moves on my own and, mm -hmm. and, and make my impact on my own. Was Run Me My Money the first <clears throat> real place where in your head you're like okay I've got a real future in this and I can solo yes yeah solo yes um my first big record actually was involved with the team you know what I mean some of them guys like I, some of the guys I can't mention but um I had wrote this record well let me stop saying wrote I came up with this record in my mind they all laughed at me the beat came on I said it nobody wants to, like nobody wants to react what I will say was the person that was a part of the group he just wanted to do a song so bad with me. He got up and got on a record. One of my boys that produced the record was like, man, I want to get on it too. You never let me rap. So we let him get on it with a hook. I came up with a hook for us. And then after people heard the hook, the rest of the members just jumped on it, right? It didn't take off. Crazy story, you getting the goods, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> it didn't take off in LA. It took off towards Menifee to IE. Okay. Some, some, some Caucasian girls was yeah. on, the, on the internet going crazy to my song, her, 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 and the song said, quit playing ho, let a nigga come through. I'm trying to fuck her, hurt, and hurt too. And tell that bitch over there that she can come too. Cause I'ma beat the pussy up like what? The most vulgar shit ever, yeah, yeah. right? But we know about- the White bitches love that shit, A.B. Crazy, bro. <laughs> and it went fucking viral, bro. Everybody started blowing that shit up. I was like, damn. And see my manager got on my line like, that's not no fucking single. <laughs> Radio can't play that radio shit. Radio can't play that shit. You need a song that radio can play. While it's the biggest record in the city, though. Yeah. Literally, this record created a lane of music we do called SAG music, which was what you guys would call ratchet music. But we was already doing this before they put the ratchet title on there. You know what I mean? And um, that was why I came and run my money. I wanted something. I don't know if you hear it, but it says, let me tell you one thing about... It was like an introduction. Yeah. I'll make you hungry, nigga, straight up out the CPT. So it's like... As this record is becoming um, big for me, it's actually letting you know what I, where I come from and yeah. what I represent. Okay, so I felt like it was the best way for me to put out my single. And that record got me the money. That record got the houses. <laughs> Which is dope. And, and you made great decisions with it. Amen. So that it wasn't just, you see so many people and shit. I mean, I've, I look back, the last couple of years has been real reflecting for me where it's like, all right, you had some some TV money. What did you do with it? Did you buy depreciation, mm -hmm. depreci depreciating assets, or appreciating assets? Mm -hmm. And so I've had to really like look myself in the mirror and make some of those um, you know, kind of call yourself out in a, in a way. And hey, like, you hey. popping, bro? Uh, you know. And that, but that's the thing. It's like, can you create wealth from being popping? Mm -hmm. You know, or are you just going to be known? pockets but have to match for the, the rest of your life you know what i mean yeah. exactly so building from that you start to make relationships you obviously have a, a huge record at that time which you had spent a couple years trying to break that record yeah, right Can yeah you speak about that that process dj head and, and chuck mm -hmm. dizzle shout out to them at yeah. homegrown radio uh your interview with them you mentioned how you know head had heard that record hey keep pushing it keep mm -hmm. pushing it and it was like what a couple years mm -hmm. and different video shoots for it and shit before yeah. it really popped off yeah like i'm talking about three three different videos for it one never came out mm -hmm. the third one actually went big the first one was like locally big um yeah that's that's just the process of any record you know what i mean um home snatched it fast it began to grow and as the record began to grow out 
is when I traveled to get it places, meaning I had to go meet up with new DJs, meet up with people, let people see videos. You know what I mean? It takes a while for this thing. And um, I just, like I said, we just didn't have the money at the time to make the record bigger as what it can be. Like now the record is so big, man. And it had the little uh, confrontation with the girl that yeah. took the record. Um, and um, yeah, the record is big. It's one of those things that never gonna escape me. I gotta perform that record for the rest of my life, bro. It's not a bad problem to have. Nah, nah. I take that problem any day. Um, I, I created some more though. You know, Money Dance is another one that's never gonna escape me. Yeah, I got some records. You know. You do. Yeah. yeah. And so that was a couple years later. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I don't want to say acceptance, but my my question is, how is the game changing for you at that point? How is it? How much easier is it for you to get features and, and link up with different artists? Like, can you speak to how, as you're grinding, progressing, and, and making your own moves, how things start to change for you? Relationships, conversations start to change with these bigger artists. You mentioned Game and Dip, etc. Yeah, with success comes, people answer the phone. You know what I mean? Um, I'm sure you know that. Um, when success comes, people answer the phone. And um, at that point, that's when you said it becomes your hustle, it becomes your grind. How do you make this thing called being popular makes you money, though? Making your pockets match your perception. Um, I just got on the grind at the time. And uh, they called me and said, Game been dancing to run me my money every single day at Club True. I ain't never been to Club True. We going to Club True tonight. As soon as I seen Game, what's up? We need a remix. I'm from the city. What's up? Like, you know, Game came. Come here, come here. You know, Game is. So are you AV, LMKR, or are you Captain AV? Ain't they the same people? <laughs> you know, I'm like, so that was pretty dope experience. You know, that taught me, Nipsey, Nipsey actually told me too, like brand, bro. You know what I'm saying? People think you two different people. You got a brand at AV, make that one. And that's why I went completely Captain AV. Um, but yeah, um, then French Montana had jumped on Money Dance. And that was another- That's huge. I like, didn't even realize that, he had Exactly, that was another deep, uh, we, we dropped the ball because the company, got the record, he loved the record, he did the record, but they never let him meet me. And at that time, I was like, y'all mishandle Remy my money and I'm leaving. I won't Remy my money back, yeah. it's my shit. And I'm taking money dance with me because my boy Sino, me and my boy Sino, Honorable Sino, had came up with a bond, he's a big producer. And um, we wanted this record, this was gonna be our record. And um, of course they gonna do anything to try to tarnish it. And, but yeah, money dance got um, French Montana on it, man, that would've been dope. So it actually never came out? It came out on my mixtapes. Got you. But could never really so get we the never, push. Yeah, we never got the push it either. Wow, I was gonna say, because I'd never heard that version. But that's the, see, that's the business. And yeah. that's what I mean about being young and me and my situation now, I know that, you know, I make personal relationships with people. You know, the company went and spoke on my behalf. He probably was excited to meet me and never could meet me. And you know, that was the thing about this whole situation. Just, um, I had a six month lease for running my money. I was involved with a company for six months. And in six months, they did that much damage. Now the record did good because I'm just big at home. But we had a we had a big, big record, man. That record was crazy, bro. We could have really blew off the off both of them. I could have went global off both of them. I won't cry about it though. I got some more work. I make hits. You know what I mean? And I do it for fun. That's that's what's dope about me. I do this when the lights is off. I don't do this for no fame, I don't do this for no money. I actually like writing and making records for sure. How has the grind for you, or what has kept you grinding? In those moments where you're like, you have these records, you know what they could have been, and then compared to what they were, and so you're starting to deal with the business side of things. How have you, over the years, just put out another album called All In, mm -hmm. you know, when we talk about these, these spans of multi-years, almost decade, like what's kept you going and has helped you find the love, whether it be someone who you've looked up to, interview, book, quote, like when, when things are challenging for you, what has kept you going in those moments? Um, I'm gonna say this, my passion for this thing, first of all, me um, having an urgency and a, and, a, and, a, and a wanting for this situation. The second important thing is my mama ain't raised no quitter, which is the reason why I put mama on the all-in cover. And third, the fans. I can't go nowhere without them saying, AV, we need some more shit. We need, we need you to drop that. And it's like crazy because my fans started with me when they was 12 or 13, 14 years old. So they're only 24 now, 23 now. 
You know what I mean? I'm gonna give you a crazy story about a girl. I remember she used to come to my warehouse party. She used to wear a beanie. And um, some years had went by, you know, 10 went by. And um, I guess she had moved to go do her college thing. You know how they do that. And then they come back home. She's like, I'm coming to your show tonight. But I had been just talking to her so regular at times. I never went to go look at her page, none of that. So when she came to the show, I see a girl with ass and titties on her. And she like, man, I love you, w, you know my name. And I'm like, that's you? <laughs> It's crazy, like, how far they come with me. Yeah. And um, they keep me in it. Um, I rap about true life events. I rap about, um, you know, I'm not one of those people that call people haters or or saying they're jealous of me just to say it like other rappers. Like, I know some people that really, really hate and told me on the phone just because they want to speak to you, you know, that they, they like, I was hating on you. You know what I mean? I got some, I got some actual haters that are mad that they, they stopped and quit on me. And I kept chasing my dream. And now that I'm big, I won't respond or talk like I used to. And they're mad about that. And it's like, bro, I didn't, I wasn't mad when you chose to go run off of so-and-so and, and be so-and-so rap group and this and this. So it's just, I'm in it. Uh, and when I say, when I say I named my, my project All In, I did that purposely. You know, I put my daughter on Still Thugging because I was still out here in these streets going hard and still, I'm talking about pulling up to everybody hood, doing verses with them jumping out shaking the, the realest killers hands and all that not to be cool they got dreams too and these niggas listen to Compton AV and it was crazy that you could see real life real niggas like bro we fuck with you because all the rest of these rappers won't come through here they scared you know what I mean and that gave me an extra appreciation for music too so I have a, a mind state of I put my mother on my album cover meaning I'm not playing anybody that bring their mama to the fight Ain't nobody touching her, if that makes sense. And in a sense, my mother gave up her, her music career for her first son, which is me. So the fact that I'm able to do a, a, a 360 or whatever, whatever you want to call it, and, and bring my mama back into this game, she's still young, she's still beautiful, she's still active, she's smart as fuck. And um, people love it, you know what I'm saying? It came organically. I've been keeping her away from this thing six years. But one day we did something and people was like, we love your mom. And then we just did some around the house. People were like, we love your mom. So of course business is gonna kick in. Oh, that's another bag. You gotta go get the bag, you know. Yeah, man, she's fun, she's dope, she's um, she with her son. She's more realer than any of these niggas that ever been around me for my fame. And that's a that's a that's a good thing too, man. So yeah, with this process all in right now, it's the shows. I still can make hits. I got some of my best music on all in, which is crazy, because I was able to work with other producers other sounds different vibes different places i've been through some things i took a two-year I, I didn't i ain't dropped music in two years kev i don't know if you, know if you know if you know that but time flies so fast people didn't even know i didn't drop i didn't drop music for two years i was in a state of they gonna respect me and the next time i come you gonna respect me and uh my intro proved that my interlude proves like proves that and my outro proves that and then the rest of the album is what I've been through, um, relationship-wise, um, fame-wise, being broke-wise, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody think it's, it's just all, like, I done lost it all and got it back because of those smart decisions I did in the beginning. And um, I feel like I can just teach the world some game if they just listen right now. You know what I mean? All In is just bigger than me putting moms on a cover, um, trying to put out some hit songs. No, it's some game in there. It's about uh, watching your back for the snakes, it's about uh, watching the industry, which is the biggest snake, successfully, end up, you know, I'm being successful, independent. You know what I mean? I can go get records from Kaylin, which is a rising star right now. Chris O'Bannon, which is a rising star right now. A legend, like Currency. You know what I'm saying? Um, Stupid Young from the Asian community, the Crips, which is a rising star right now. Um, just the respect that I built over these years with, uh, with music, and I can still get some of the hottest dudes in the game to get on my music. That's dope. You know what I mean? And I actually held back on this project because I wanted this project to be the introduction. The 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 next project, oh my god, when you see the names to this one. Yeah, so you just got some free game too right there, Kev. I got some big ones on this next one too. That's fifty percent done. And they don't even know it's gonna hit them yet. That's what's up, man. Yeah. The visuals that you've put out for all in. I was super impressed by the studio vibe set up almost like unplugged visual mm -hmm. that you guys put out for some of the 
the records off of that album because I thought it looked really cool and what you guys I'm assuming we're going for it certainly looked like it was accomplished it looked dope yeah yeah oh um, just me spurred of the moment mm -hmm. I've been in it so long they say it's a uh, 90% business 10% music the music is easy for me um, marketing uh, building and bringing eyes to the situation that you can always think is so big personally but you have to make this thing big for everybody I knew I knew I had a great performance. I know I have a great tone of voice right now. Um, and I know people are watching me in a time we call COVID. It was a good time to strike right now because I was able to give you a performance. I was able to give you a new me. I was able to give you a, a, a more accomplished, grown, successful me. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted to do. If, if I'm gonna name some all in, I gotta figure out every single angle to the situation. And uh, that's what I've been doing, you know, even, you know, unreleased live on my boy Kev shit right now, man. I got the video with Currency. I flew to, like, New Orleans, got the video with Currency. And um, that video is dope, too. You know, just upping myself. We got Rolls Royce umbrellas. And, we, man, we're trying to bring success and, 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 and inspiration and motivation to the to the trenches, man. All these people, man. Like, you come from where we come from. Like, when I, when I watch you, like, I was a fan of you before you even knew I was watching. I'm like, who is this dude? Like, this is where he came from? Like, then you told me, like, where you grew and, and how you used to travel up and down the coast and, like, the rappers that you like. Like, bro, like, that shit is dope that you have a passion for something that we all love, too. That's why I connect with you so well. Because you're not faking this shit. And people need to know that Kev is not faking this shit. Kev can give you more game on the rap game, rap industry, and rappers than you possibly, than you can. And like I said, that was something that I got from you just looking at something on Instagram. You gave me that vibe. And then when I met you, you matched who you were on the internet. And you don't see that. And that's what I want to do. When you meet me in real life, I'm that same nigga you see on the internet. We need more of those. Oh, absolutely, man. You mentioned Spitter. I'm hoping to get him on, on here as well. That's this easy. Soon. It's a phone call. You got um, that, bro. And, uh, you know, like you were mentioning some of the old bay cats like you've done songs with jay Stalin mm -hmm. too like my when boy. i started to see it, your your catalog i was like my man boy Stalin, what up Stal so, you know, Stalin actually was one of the first people to hire me to edit a video for him he shot a song for he shot a, a video for the song called let's get it on use old i think marvin gay sample mm -hmm. and uh and he just brought me the footage and i just put it together for him he shot it in uh, cypress village and um Stalin is one of the funniest dudes. I remember Stalin had me parked in front of his fucking house in, it must have been West Oakland, for like two hours oh, waiting for this shit. fool to come pay me my money. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and he kept saying like, yo, I'm there in 20 minutes, mm -hmm. I'm 20 minutes. I'm like, bro, just tell me you're going to be here at fucking mm -hmm. five o'clock if you're going to have me sitting out front for two hours. But shout out to Stalin, one of the best dudes. Uh, just a funny Stalin, cat. Real, He's bro. Just a real entertainer. For you, when you're able to, like, A, work with different artists from different parts of the world mm -hmm. and the country, and also get out, like, where's what's been a show that you've done outside of this area that surprised you in terms of, like, the feedback, the reaction to records, et cetera? Mm. Do you want to know the exact place or just to feel Just in it? general. No, like, I would, I'm curious about a place that maybe surprised you in oh, terms I, of, like, I did how a, much they I did Atlanta. I did Atlanta, where this was about five years ago, six okay. years ago, and um, they was making it seem like Atlanta wasn't too fond of the West Coast sound. You know that. And I'm the only West Coast artist on there. Everybody else got the Southern sound and all of that. And uh, that was one of the hardest shows because they tried to trick me out of my spot before I got there. Meaning like, I was almost gonna, gonna you, right. Yeah. Meaning I was almost gonna change what I was gonna perform that night. But how was I gonna give you the best me if I don't perform what I'm comfortable performing? So I just rock with my original show. And they stood up and they fuck with me hard, bro. And uh, this sound we got is global. I think Fad was favorite right now is what people are running for, right? Which is good too, because that should be fun. But let's remember that we come from this W, man, and let's stand on it and make our sound just as global as Atlanta's. And let's all respect each other in this musical pot. And um, that's just some game for the young artists that's watching this, man. Do your 
if, if West Coast is where you at, where the heart is, push that shit so we can make our sound bigger. And then go fuck around with some South shit too, bro. Because they do it, bro. You know, the Migos come in here and do Ric Flair drip. That's West Coast. We got big sound too, man. And um, we just got to up it, man. Shout outs to all the youngsters, man. They know who they are. Like I said, man, I, I give shout outs. I can give shout outs. Of course, Drake, man. yo, killing them. AZ Chai, keep doing your thing. Kalen, for real, for real. You know what I mean? One take, blue face, dogging them. You already know what it is, man. It's just like, we just got to... Rucci, I don't want to forget nobody, but man, everybody yeah. in the city, man. Roots Yellow dog. Hill, Roots Dog, man. Keep keep, keep pushing the, the coast. Keep pushing the sound, man. Y'all doing it, man. I salute y'all. Keep doing it. Uh, yeah. Them some global artists, man. They just got to kick that fucking door hard, bro. And, and Captain AV right here kicking it with you, big dog. Let's do it. Hey, I know me personally, why uh, I love sitting down with you and just chopping it up with you because you carry yourself with a humility that isn't always seen just in the entertainment in general like you know even outside of music you deal with people from different spaces um, you know, there's a lot of ego and ego pushing going on and it's obviously great to have pride in what you do and be confident and all that but the fact that you even take a moment like that to, to shout out some other artists in an interview that's about you says a lot about who you are and what you've been about for, for years. Um, kind of looking forward, I know that this All In is, is, was a huge project for you. Um, is there like, is there one artist that you're like, man, it would be really, really dope to make music with this person? Uh, just maybe a, someone who you're a real fan of mm -hmm. um, that you haven't actually been able to, to link up with yet or are working toward doing so? Um, I want to work with Meek and I'm going to tell you why. First of all, I want to say that, and he plays like an underdog card, and he's successful though. Um, every time he ever put out anything on a magnitude has always been taken serious. Meaning it gets real, 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 real scary when Meek drops. I love that feeling, like, like Meek make it like all his intros is like, like, like you know what I mean? Um, I just want to go in the studio and spar with him, you know what I mean? Um, especially with the producers he worked with. Um, I know my tone, I know my voice, I know my ambition, I know my passion, I know what to say. And I feel like me and him will make a crazy ass record together. Rather it's going back and forth or he go first and I go and top it off, whatever the case may be. But um, yeah, people like me and then Nipsey, man. You know what I mean? I actually got a record. I'm gonna say that. I got a record with Nipsey. Y'all need to stop playing. Let's holler at Sam. See if we can put that record out and get that record right. But we just wanted to respect him passing. I don't want it to be a cloud chase moment. Absolutely. Yeah. Something like that, man. I actually respect that man, his team, and his family. And um, yeah, so we kind of stepped back on record. You know what I mean? Out of respect for Nip. And um, but when the time is right, it'll. Not it'll even when the time. I feel like the time is right. I feel like um, well, I got the record. Kid. Yeah. I got the record. Yeah. Nobody in the world needs to know. Yeah. But I got the record. It got bro voice on it. And I'm thankful for that. If that's the payment and that's what God wanted to give me for it, that's what it go. You know what I mean? Now, if everything else happens, that's just a plus in my book. But other than that, yeah, I can listen to the song when I want to. And that's dope. <laughs> I mean, like, there's not a lot of people that can say that. That's a that's a real honor. Amen. So one of the sponsors of Cruising with Kevin is Genesis. I'll get on this a little bit so you can feel the power. Yeah. Wee. So this, this thing is, get up. Oh. So this is a Genesis G70. Mm -hmm. This thing is a 3.3 turbo. It's like 365 horsepower, and they have allowed me to do my interviews in this car. Mm -hmm. So from that takeoff to just your vibe in here, what do you think, man? And I feel like my career, bro. Do that again. <laughs> yeah, big shout outs to Genesis, man. We taking off like Compton AV career, man. Uh, no, this thing fast though, bro. You know, so I just got the E400, the uh, Mercedes Benz. That joint fast too. Yeah, I think I think the Genesis kind of get with that. You know, I want to be disrespectful. You know, but big shout outs to Genesis, man. My boy Kev, man, for pulling up. Uh, I gotta say this before I go, man. Kev, I've been a fan of you before you pulled up on me, saying that you was a fan of me. I felt like that's um, fan of a fan. That's appreciated. It's love. You come from a real place, and um, Genesis. Be thankful to have a person like Kev because Kev can actually touch the streets for y'all in the right way. I'm a young boy from Compton, California. I've been fighting for this dream forever. This is another sign of me making it. This is a trophy for me inside of my heart. I have a lot of trophies inside of my heart. My new project is titled All In, the best work I ever put out. Um, the fans have assured me that this is the best work I've put out. And um, 
yeah, rest in peace to all the greats, man. I, um, COVID took a lot of people from me. Um, I want to say this. Y'all are not in this fight alone. You know what I mean? Uh, we losing people on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, you can do something about it. We can move people out of these neighborhoods. We can get better schooling. We can get more motivational speakers, um, people to come through. And I'm a real dude. I'm willing to do whatever y'all want to do. So tap the line. Tap in with me. Tap in with Kev. We, the, we, we, the pull, we don't play. We, we the pull-up team. We get the job done. And uh, yeah, big shout-outs to Genesis, man. Compton AV in the building. I love all my fans. Let me, let me top it off with that. And mama, you already know I love you, baby. Absolutely, bro. Yeah. And I saw you with the, the, the peanut butter guts. And your mean. mom pulled up in some in some foreign. She got one too. <laughs> how does uh how does this whip compare to uh to what you guys are pushing right now? Oh yeah. Can I hang? Like can you I can, hang. can I pull can. up at the Yeah, you can pull up too, man. What you mean? Jack and box with you. I don't play with me, Kev. You know we'd be somewhere at a show. I got a show March twelfth. We we riding up in the Genesis, man. You let me know if your schedule free, man. I know you pop it. If you need some bottles or you, they got to pay your fee to pull up too because I know you worth some money, I'll let me, man. <laughs> we can make that happen. Uh, do you remember what your first car was? A Mazda 626. That's a good first car, man. Yeah, it was a stick. Yeah, so you learned mom, how to drive it for real? I bet you are racing see, that mom, thing all over, Avery. My mom always played games with me. She said, I got you a car, but it's a stick. And she sat it out there for a month. And you, you got to right? learn how to drive she it. she right? said, uh, if you can get it around the corner one time, you, you can ride it. <laughs> I fucked that clutch up on. <laughs> but I made it though. And after that, you know, I kind of learned from some of the people around the way. My mom taught me how to ride it. Yeah, but a Mazda 626 stick shift, man. I was in it. Well, we've come a long way. We're riding Amen. Genesis now, baby. Amen. We need that Lambo and that Phantom. <laughs> that's next. Amen. It's all look good out in Calabasas. Yeah, it will. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's a there's a record that I want to play because you've been putting it on your social media. Hey. And uh, I thought it'd be fun to go through some of the lyrics with you. I, I just want to make sure that I've that I'm uh, interpreting some of these uh, lyrics correctly. You know, I'm I'm a very literal person, Av, and uh, and so I don't know if I if I know these lyrics as as they were meant to be known, but I'll let you know kind of where my where my mind goes. Uh, your song is Sliding, hey. featuring Long Beach, Stupid Young, of course. Stupid, what up, nigga? Uh, I, was, uh, I was playing this song the whole ride over here, bro. And, and I thought it'd be fun to actually play it with you. Let's do it. I mean, it's just, it just doesn't get any better than this. Riding with Compton AV. What? Slide. I be sliding with this chop on my lap. On my lap, we be looking for the house. Where they at? Where they at, dude? We do with that chop and go rack. Rack spin, move, hit your black and double back, baby. We be slide. We be slide. I've been sliding since kindergarten, bro. We need you to do the dance, kid. What up? I was I was a little league all star in San Diego for baseball. I've been sliding for a long time. Yeah. So I think I should talk about. Nah, not that kind of slide, but. Hey, don't you know, any type of slide. Fuck. This is the type of slide I'm talking about. Trip on. Pissing on his grave, baby. That's disrespectful. Hey, sometimes. They want beef. Vegetarian. Right. Because yeah. some of these dudes ain't really like that, kid. You can slide with me any day. Doors open on the that shit that you done posted on the gram. On hey, my lap, we be looking for the house. Where they at? Where they at, though? Wait up, the speed move. Hit your block and double back, baby. Slide, 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 but we can't, see no can't find him. He's having a tough time finding him. They be hiding, bro. They be really hiding, bro. You know I really did it. Uh -huh. Long Beach, Cambodia, in town. He been with it since a young and he was sliding with the pistols in the city. Woo! He talking that shit. From the streets, from the where they label us or other. They be like. Yeah, I don't say that word. Because he grew up with us, nigga. I feel it. Hey, you know what's crazy? I don't mind if you say it. 
Nah, it's just getting true. I don't know. I don't know if you feel, but I'm telling you, I fuck with you so much. Double back. I'm at the window. You can say it. The speed move hit your block and double back, baby. Slide, huh? Slide, huh? Slide. What? Slide. Hey. Slide. Like with the stick, right? Like chopsticks Slide. you're eating uh, Slide. Chinese food? Yeah. I love orange chicken, brother. I got so you. So good. When it it's, it's all type of sliding you can do, man. <laughs> you say you say you play baseball, slide on, you know. Slide, man. Oh. Anybody out there doing any, I don't care if you mop the floor, slide. Mm -hmm. If you So that the mop you're talking about, right? Yeah. Pull up with that mop. Yeah, slide. Let them, let them, let them have it. Yeah, the feds be listening, so I feel you. I just caught on. Mm -hmm. I just caught on. Yep. We talking about baseball. Yeah, and shout out to the Dodgers winning the World Series, bro. Big time. Yeah, that's what we talking about. The Dodgers. Yeah. Yeah. Big for the city. <laughs> Real big for the city. Yeah. Sliding. 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 Sliding on you bitch and vocals. You should have had me on the hook. Man. I got you, I man. Just Remix. Some vocals. Remix. The kid. A little something, Tom. We gotta get you a rap name. Don't be like Lil something. Don't do that. You know when I was editing back in the day. Uh, when I had, when I was editing for Kafani, Jay Stalin, oh man, I was shooting Young Dro shows and all kinds of shit. Hey, Dro, my boy. That's uh, my boy. I shot uh, and edited with the name Young Theezy. Oh. What do you think about that? See you know what I'm saying? You was another one of them. <laughs> Little Young. <laughs> young Theezy, bro. I had my uh, phone number on my t shirt too. So people could just, you know. They used to try to call me Young AV, but that shit didn't work. No, that's good you weren't called today. Yeah, I was just. Yeah, just call me AV. I'm big time. We, but no, nah, I guess yeah. Everybody do that young and little shit. Yeah, yeah that young, was the time. Young you know? Theezy. Yeah, Young Theezy. About 2008. How you yeah. get Theezy? Where you get Theezy from? So my my government last name. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you guys a a, a, a gem here. Is Thom, which is Swedish. Um, and so when I left San Jose to do my TV stuff, I had a talk with my mentor, and he was like, "You should really use your mom's maiden name, which is Cuenca." Uh, because anyone who knows me knows how I'm much closer to my mom, my mom's side of the family. No, no disrespect to my dad, but he had his challenges in life and my mom was just like kind of a superwoman. And so I was always, and I never really got to know my mom's or my dad's parents because of their alcoholism. They died when I was like, you know, before I was six, both of them. And so I grew up with the childhood of being really close with my mom. Mm -hmm. And also being much closer to her parents than my dad's. So I always, always been like very tied into the Cuenca side of the family as opposed to the Thom, which is my dad's. And so when he brought that up to me, he was like, this is a way for you to differentiate mm -hmm. yourself. It's unique. You need to use Cuenca. And it, me going to my first like network TV gig, I was like, you know what? I think this is good for me. And, and so I did. And I remember my boss was so pissed because I was in this like, country Hoboke town in, in Texas and he was like we already made your business cards mm -hmm. and you 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 got a Spanish name now like what the fuck and he was pissed dude and so it was like something that he really held against me for the rest of the time that I worked there um, I remember like saying oh, dude I'll pay for the business cards like what's the big deal like it's, it's I just want to honor my mom's side of the family and uh yeah, pops be and and so well no no it wasn't my dad it was my oh. boss the, oh. the guy who had hired me thinking my last name was Thom and I get there and I'm like no I'm gonna use Cuenca and he was mm -hmm. pissed like like we thought we had a regular mm -hmm. white dude like mm -hmm. what the fuck are you doing you're messing this up um so I've used Cuenca ever since but obviously DZ is like a is a playoff of Thom so yeah. it was people would call me Kevy T and uh and so from that I I, I just made it young DZ for my editing stuff all right so when you do this remix you kevy t on my shit though, bro. <laughs> there we go all right whatever you want brother. that's your rap name kevy t <laughs> kevy t hey, amen no uh, little kevy t it's big kevy t around this motherfucker bro. big kev big kev i like i kind of like big kev big kev is hard bro yeah, big kev kind of hard that's it let him know who's cracking yeah big big kev is your name bro big kev, remix. I, like, I like that big kev remix because i was talking to my boy steels that produced the song we we're actually doing a remix of sliding so i don't know if you want to come through doing them intros you do on, on sliding man, for us bro know, whatever you need brother big shout outs to steels man yeah before i go man big shout outs to all the producers on all in uh my boy steels finesse we got time don't will, feel like you gotta like clay you know, okay i got you go through take your time yeah yeah will clay um finesse steels um chin 89 mm -hmm. 
you know what I mean? All of the artists that came through, Currency, Kaylin, Stupid Young, Sully Rue, Chris O'Bannon, um, Dylan Janae, my mama. mother. Yeah, 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 man, because she'll kill me, bro. <laughs> exactly. She got a project coming out, too. I think it's the perfect time to mention it. Mama album on the way. Okay. They're Four both songs. Going, yeah, you good. We rocking, man. A little man. EP? Yeah. A little EP, man. She finna kill him. Okay. You know, get some streaming money. Yeah. Shit, I started a new. Well. I started a new label. It's the first time I'm saying it on anybody network. Uh, Rich off rap is the label. I like that. Yeah, Rich off rap. I think it's some dope shit. Some some young, some young. I'm gonna go get some some talent around the world, man. I think I need to have some of these youngers yelling, Rich off rap. You know, I got Rich off rap. Rather, it's in spirit. You know, rapping makes my spirit rich. Makes, you know, what I mean, um, you can listen to my music and feel rich. Um, made me a significant amount of money. So Rich Off Rap is the perfect thing to do it, man. Uh, yeah, Rich Off Rap the label. So with that, like, what's your what's your vision for it, man? Like, do you have an idea of like, hey, I want this many artists. These are the kind of artists I want. Here's what I want to try to go to get the artists. Like, I want two, two in the first year, of mm -hmm. course, of success, pretty much from each region, meaning um, two New York. To, to Atlanta, mm -hmm. you know, Charlotte is real hot. Memphis is real hot. I need them to be young, fresh, and and authentic. And um, we finna show you uh, what a uh, Birdman, what um, Jay Z did for hip hop. I think we need that back again. Mm -hmm. You know, teams. I see it with um, CMG though, with uh, Yo Gotti, uh, QC, Quality Control. I see what they doing. Uh, yeah, but they always lead the West out. We need some West Coast in there, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. You got me, I'm gonna have two young West Coast acts, some New York acts, and we just gonna try to make it that thing. And I'm gonna have them all doing records with each other. Um, I feel like the sound is gonna really, really, um, I like what New York is doing with the South right now. If we can get New York, the South, and the West Coast to have a sound, that'd be dope too. Cause I see what the South and New York is doing. They have that pop smoke, Migo type of vibe with their music. We need to see how we can throw some little West Coast little vibe in that. That'll be dope. Get some global shit popping. But yeah, I feel like the label is gonna be good. Um, it's refreshing. It sounds good. It's some st some stuff that I grew up hearing my whole life. So yeah, it's gonna be tight. That's a natural progression, and I think it's really dope that you are envisioning it and thinking of it. And then this is a time when mm -hmm. you can literally go on your phone and be like, I want to sign this artist. Damn. Like I want to use my platform mm -hmm. and like where I'm become like where I'm coming now. And um, and your knowledge too, man. Yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. The, like the go like the the nuggets that you can exactly give to some youngsters. Exactly, I can um, I can really make some millionaires. And the thing is, I don't want number respect. That's what's gonna be dope about my company. Of course, I'll make money, but my shit will be standard. It won't be nothing like these labels, and it'll just be all fair. And we're gonna be a family. Yeah. And if that person fucks up, that person fucks up. You know what I mean? And um, uh, that energy will not be accepted. And uh, I want every artist to feel like, oh, I'm gonna be stupid if I leave here. Mm. That's the kind of company I wanna build. And um, you probably can look at me like that's cap, however y'all wanna look at it, but nobody ever signed Compton AV. And that's that's a part of uh, my get back to the industry. Y'all didn't wanna sign me because y'all didn't wanna give me what I deserve. Mm -hmm. Y'all wanted to own what I worked so hard for. Y'all wanted to uh, change who I am, which is why I have a core fan base to this day. And um, I just want all the artists that's out there that's looking, I want to be a part of some real shit. I don't want to change who you are. I just want to enhance what you do, um, put a little money behind it, and um, let you do what you do, man. And that's the good thing about the internet, like you say. I'm trying to find you when you got 20,000 followers so we can blow you up into the millions, bro. It's all good. Well, AV, I can't thank you enough, man, for taking the time. This was really dope. Like, I had kind of a, a list of things that I wanted to ask in my mm -hmm. notes. And it was like, you would say things that would just kind of remind me of that. Dope. It would just flow, like like I, I hope the conversation would. So this is how we talk in real life, though, kid. Uh, but that's what's so dope is like sometimes, it's it is that easy, Amen. and and that's that's how it was. So I appreciate you taking the time, man. Oh, I love, man. I appreciate you for pulling up. You really, I told you the pull up crew, man. Yeah. My boy really pulled up dude. out here. Hey man, what I tell you, I say, bro, hit me anytime, man. You yeah, good? You said there's some. See y'all, y'all can't get a hold of me like Kev can. You know, it costs money. You know, I charge now, bro. But Kev, I'm so cheap. Hey, you can hit me up. Hey, hey. He me. really not cheap though. <laughs> you know, he humble, but 
right. Come bring you your money, Kev. You know what time it is. Houses, brother. Yeah, we won, man. Right Thank you, brother. Hey, we in here. Shout out to my boy Kev for having Compton AV live. All in the album out mail. Tap in. That's Link right. in my bio. I got to keep on saying that. Link in my bio. <laughs> yeah. Huge shout out to Compton AV for joining me on this episode of Cruise with Kevin. Had an absolute blast rolling around with him and getting to know more about his story and his journey, what's got him to this point. I got to thank Protect for being the presenting sponsor. And of course, to Genesis for giving me this beautiful G70 to roll around in. Last but certainly not least, much love to you all. If you can like, comment, subscribe, that would be amazing. But regardless, appreciate you hanging out today. We'll see you next time right here on Cruising with Kevin. Ahala! Marathon continues. TMC.